Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. And in this episode, we're gonna look at some simple hobby hacks for packing foam, the useful hobby product that you didn't know you already have. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. Packing Foam. This humble product comes with pretty well every metal or resin model I've ever got. And I don't know any dedicated model builders that don't have huge quantities of it. But what can you do with it? Besides padding your models when they're shipping, what else is it useful for? Now, I know a lot of people that just throw it away, but I'm here to say maybe you want to retain at least a little bit of it. Over the years, plenty of model builders have come up with methods to use this plentiful product. In this video, I'm going to give you my top three applications because packing foam just doesn't have to be used as packing materials. Let's get to it. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Without their assistance, miniature landscape hobbies would not be possible. If you would like to learn more about the benefits of becoming a Patreon supporter, please check the link in the video description. The first and most widely known use of packing foam is for chipping. This is the process of weathering armor or similar models to look like they've wear and tear on their paint jobs. This can help establish a sense of time and environment for a model and can even be used to introduce variable colors and establish scale. For this reason, among military model builders, sponge chipping is an essential skill. To achieve this effect, grab a piece of packing sponge and tear off in a regular shape. Some people go to great efforts to refine the shape with tweezers and knives, although I've never really found this necessary. Next, mix up a lighter version of the dominant color in the area you're working on. You don't need to thin this. A fairly thick paint is better for this. Now dip the sponge in your paint. With the loaded sponge, dab it on a paper towel until it's transferring very little paint. You're now ready to start dabbing it on the model surface. Usually this will be in areas where high wear will occur, but chip it however you want. After the chipped paint is dry, you can go back and fill in the middle with a gray or rust red color to complete the effect. It's also a good idea to leave some of the marks without a darker center to imply more superficial type damage. One thing to keep in mind here is that you can overdo this effect, so less is generally more. Keep the chips in logical areas around fenders, tracks, and hatches. Do your best to avoid placing the chips in ways that look uniform or symmetric. You can also go back with a fine brush later and refine the chips into scratches. Before we leave this topic, I have a tip I swear by when it comes to chipping. If you're using water slide transfers, don't be afraid to chip over these. By layering damage and wear over the decals, you can imply that they are in fact part of the model surface, and if a decal looks too obvious or the color on it is too bold, Chipping over it can tone down how obvious it is, making it appear more natural and in scale. The dry brushing technique seems to go in and out of style for model builders. But right now, it's kind of a big deal. Why? Well, the popularity of speed paints and other zenithal painting products has made dry brushing very much a mainstream skill. But dry brushing for all its usefulness is a skill that needs to be acquired and practiced. The main trick with dry brushing is the right amount of pressure and how this relates to the bristles on the brush itself and of course your paint consistency. The bad news here is that after 30 years as a miniature painter I've not ever come up with a way to teach people how to do this technique and get consistent results. It's just one of those things that seems to be intuitive in nature 
and you can only get this down by practice. But what we can address here is chalkiness. When you dry brush paint on a model, it tends to come out as a dry dust. This is good because it collects on the high points, but it's bad because it deposits an unrealistic chalky film on your surface. To deal with this, I've seen plenty of people try thinning the paint. At any other point, this seems reasonable, but for dry brushing, this leads to streaks, which just look awful. The solution to the chalkiness problem is really kind of strange. It's not to change the paint, but to moisten the bristles of your brush, just ever so slightly. When the brush is slightly damp, the paint will collect properly when you dry brush it, and it won't make chalky marks. This is where the packing foam comes in, as it can be used to get the perfect amount of moisture into your brush. First, grab a small container and squish a good-sized piece of packing sponge into it. Now wet it. I use a spray bottle, but you could dampen it any way you choose. Follow up by dumping the excess water out and wring out the sponge. Now you're ready to go. Before you pick up your paint, rub the brush over the sponge lightly. It'll pick up just enough moisture to work well. Now proceed with dry brushing as normal. If you keep your technique and pressure right, the chalkiness will be gone. My final use for packing foam also has to do with dry brushing. Traditionally, after you've loaded the bristles with paint, you unload the brush partially by rubbing it on a paper towel. This of course wicks away any of the moisture along with the paint. If you've done what I've mentioned previously and you've pre-moistened the bristles, you stand a chance of ruining the delicate balance of moisture you've added to your bristles by being too aggressive with the paper towel. The pitfalls of using paper towel are, of course, well known to serious model painters. And they deal with this using textured palettes and a host of other products. But you know what? Packing foam does a good job here too. And since you likely have lots of it lying around, basically you can fix the problem for free. After your bristles have been moistened and the paint has been loaded, instead of rubbing it on paper towel, just get a large piece of packing foam and use that instead. I find the foam creates enough friction to pull away excess paint, but unlike, say, a kitchen sponge, packing foam doesn't draw much of the moisture from the bristles. This leaves your brush ready to make a pristine dry brush finish on your work. So there you have it. Three uses for the humble byproduct of model and miniature packaging. Packing foam. Now here I have to say that this is just the uses I've come up with. I'm sure there are a million other options out there. If you have any ideas I've missed or something that you would like to cover, then make sure you add it in the comments so we can all share hobby tips. If you'd like to learn about the theory behind model painting, please watch this video or watch this other video instead. Thanks for watching and as always, Remember to keep building life in miniature.